Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today, continuing the momentum after the holidays. I have several special guests with us. I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Lindsay Miller, and I am from Liquid Web, and I get to be the lucky person to help us do our roundtable discussion with our three VIPs. So first we have Amber Hack. She is the Vice President of Customer Success at Springbot. And she joined the company in 2013. She is passionate about growing customers into fans and loves the intersection of e-commerce, marketing, and technology. Before joining Springbot, Amber actually was working in corporate communications, marketing, sales process, and project management at Unisource Worldwide. She enjoys traveling with her fiance, now husband, um, and spending time with her dog, Lucky, being outdoors. She is a Wisconsin native and is also a badger and pecker enthusiast. So welcome, Amber, and thank you for joining us today. Next so is AJ. Yep, sorry. Next is AJ Morris. He is product manager at Liquid Web by day, site and store builder by night. AJ has spent the last decade building anything he can around WordPress, and he spends most of his time focusing on helping small businesses build digital storefronts and a web presence. In his free time, he's devoted to his family and spending the weekends at the family cottage. So welcome, AJ. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And finally, but not least, we have Justin Santon. His official title, title is founder of Zayo, herder of small children, and president of his wife's fan club. But his day job entails running Zayo, an enterprise e-commerce and WordPress agency based in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Zayo Justin helps to help gets to help his clients all over the world, leverage his nearly two decades of software development expertise to their advantage, whether it's helping, helping companies find more margin, more time, or more money. At the end of the day, Justin is most happy when he can have a significant positive impact in the business he's able to serve. And you can learn more about Justin at zao.is. That's zao.is. So thank you for joining us, Justin. Yeah, glad to be here. So we had a few people who submitted questions ahead of time, and so we're going to be able to address those today. And then we have other questions that we wanted to just kind of take around to each of you individually. So bear with me as I um, kind of try to navigate us through this. If any of our attendees has have questions that come up, you can just use the chat in the GoToWebinar. Post your question there and we will try to get to them if we have time today. Um, so without further ado, let's get started, guys. So it seems like a lot of retailers try to put a lot of emphasis on the holidays. They are important to annual revenue, but are they missing opportunities by not thinking past December 25th, by not thinking past Christmas? Amber, what do you have to say? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think think about all the emails and promotions that you get in November and December, and they're really all aimed at getting you to buy before the Christmas holiday. Obviously, that makes sense because people are out trying to trying to buy gifts uh, for family and friends, but there's still money to be made after December 26th and beyond. And as as we've all seen, there's a lot of noise leading up to the holidays, and we get bombarded with emails and ads and social posts um, on top of everything we're trying to get done. Uh, to get going. So it really makes it hard to get your share of the shopper's wallet during that holiday window. And that's why it's so important to think, you know, December 26th and beyond of, of what you can do to leverage uh, your marketing actions after that holiday. Yeah, absolutely. So we do get a lot of um, communications. I know I do even um, from retailers that I enjoy as well. Um, AJ, do you have any points to like add to that from the WooCommerce store owner's perspective? Yeah, absolutely. We uh, at Liquid Web here actually see a number of our users kind of uh, anticipating the the oncoming uh, traffic that they they're going to see during that holiday season um, with with the various campaigns that they've created, and so. Uh, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll come to us and say, hey, we'd like to scale our resources. We want to make sure that our site is up and running and it's 
uh, going to withstand the, the onslaught of traffic that comes in um, inevitably around that holiday season. And so they're actually prepping, uh, you know, sometimes in July, sometimes uh, later into October. And so that's, that's really a, a big area um, that we see a lot of our customers coming to us at. Yeah, and Justin, what about you? Are there specific things from the development standpoint that you see um, during the holiday shopping season? Yeah, we used to find that, uh, especially in the holiday season, a lot of customers uh, of ours, a lot of store owners, they really miss an opportunity in the development window to analyze what's happening during and after the season. Um, you can gain so much insightful analytics, especially uh, with a partner like Liquid Web, utilizing glue and things like that, um, to really understand your customer in a deep way. Um, and we find that frequently store owners don't take that opportunity when they experience this influx of traffic, this influx of revenue, to really look back at that and understand what was happening and why it was happening and how they can capitalize on that in the new year. Absolutely, so you help them kind of analyze that traffic and that data and make sure that they're utilizing their resources appropriately? Yeah, absolutely. We can help them once we take a look at their uh, their analytics and their customer profiles, we can say, hey, here's some good technical solutions to help you make even more money, help you serve uh, serve your customers even better. I love that. So reaching revenue numbers during the shopping season is so important, but what else can people do um, whenever they're thinking about their cart and email service providers and able to withstand that higher traffic? Um, AJ, I'm going to let you do that from the WooCommerce perspective again. Yeah, so so some of the things uh, that we see really are, are around um, the technical aspects of running your store. And so there's there's things like um, you know, where do you you host your website? Is it is it on um, the, these sets of servers? And then where do you send those emails? Are you sending emails from the same server? Are you sending emails from an ESP? Um, and 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 what we've recommended uh, our customers to do is really separate that out, um, especially during the the holiday season. You're sending so many emails, you really don't want to get flagged um, on any spam uh, lists. Uh, for that IP address, um, because that then it starts to affect your uh, site's performance and speed. And so um, we've really recommended most of our customers to move off of that. And, um, you know, they've they've really seen drastic changes uh, when they've they've gone through that. Absolutely. So the holidays are obviously high stressful, um, high stress for a lot of us, especially our WooCommerce store owners. It must be hard to really stay motivated past all of that holiday rush. So Amber, what is one way that store owners can really keep the momentum going? Yeah, I think I, we can all relate to being exhausted leading up to the holidays and whether it's retailers or consumers, we we call it the, the holiday hangover for, for different reasons, right? Um, and I really think the good news is that retailers and marketers can take advantage of a lot of automations that they set up early on kind of preparing for the holidays. Um, so stuff like automated email campaigns, triggers, uh, abandoned cart uh, advertising that they can kind of get those set up and so they can really get, get some R&R &R, um, well, well, those are gonna perform in the background. I think really while your competition is, is exhausted, that's when you have the chance to really kind of step ahead in, in January uh, to make sure that you're still kind of up and going and making sure your automation and ads are, are fresh. Absolutely. And AJ, do you have anything else to add as far as like looking deeper onto um, the WooCommerce store that, you know, the first of the year? Yeah, we recommend uh, starting to take a look at your analytics, starting to see how well um, your site performance ran, how, how well uh, your campaigns ran, really get uh, a good understanding of, of what went well. Um, in, in the development world, we typically um, call this a retro where you take a look back and see what you did well, what didn't go well. Um, and you really start to say, okay, here's here's what went well and here's what we can do uh, for future campaigns to make that um, succeed uh, as, as well. And, and so um, that's that's kind of one area. The other the other side of that is, is what didn't go well, right? And, and what didn't go well, you know, maybe you start to say, okay, uh, you know, we tried we tried this new campaign and it just didn't work well. We had another one planned in January or February. Let's put that on hold and really try to um, regroup and, and take a look at that. 
So you're saying really analyzing the data, looking back on what happened and what you can change in 2019. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So November, December, are obviously huge for retail. We, t we talk about it a lot and a lot of stores, that's where they make the majority of the revenue for the entire year. Um, but what really happens after those holidays and where can store owners now say there are other opportunities to capitalize on? Um, Amber, I'm going to start with you again on this one. Yeah, and I think it's, it's important to remember the post-holiday opportunity isn't as big as November and December can be, as typically we see 40% of stores revenue really coming over those those two months. So that's, there's a lot of a lot of revenue coming in there, but there's still plenty of plenty of money to, to be made to kick off the new year. And there's there's really four main goals that customers should be thinking about as they kick off the new year. Uh, one, there's going to be a lot of gift exchanges, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Two, there's gift cards as your gifting presents. A lot of people get gift cards. Uh, three, New Year's resolutions. So how are people starting their new year out? And then four, Valentine's Day is is quickly approaching. And so really when you think about post holidays, there's a ton of gift exchanges. And so understanding, you know, what, uh, how can you engage shoppers who are doing exchanges to come to come to the site, do, do an exchange, um, but maybe also cross sell, upsell them. What other products could, could they potentially like? Uh, the second one would be, like I mentioned, gift cards. So entice them to come to the store, store, maybe offer exclusive deals for people using gift cards, free shipping, whatever it may be. Um, to get them to really spend early on in the year with their gift cards. Um, New Year's resolutions is a big, big thing. And so as people are thinking about, um, you know, health and fitness and all that stuff, if your brand really hits on one of those categories, uh, now's the time to double down. You want to make sure that you're getting your brand out in front of those uh, New Year's uh, resolutions and making sure you're kind of in, in line with that. And then lastly, Valentine's Day. This number blows kind of blows my mind, but Americans spend $19.6 billion uh, on Valentine's Day, billion, uh, which is just just crazy to me. Um, and that's from National Retail Federation. And I think each each store owner wants to make sure that they can kind of get part of the pie there, um, whether it's gifting, uh, whatever it may be. But Valentine's Day is, is a lot bigger than most of us think. Absolutely. That is a shocking number to hear. It surprises me um, in a very big way. Um, AJ, what about you from the WooCommerce store owner's perspective um, on these holidays at the, the beginning of the year? Yeah, a lot of a lot of our customers um, end up running different types of sales. So they'll they'll offer uh, winter sales uh, that that are kind of, hey, how do we get rid of some of our, our access inventory, uh, maybe products that didn't sell uh, through that holiday season, they just need to turn over that inventory and get ready. And so uh, you see different sales like that. You also see sales uh, like Amber mentioned, right? As people start to come over to uh, your site to, to start to purchase with gift cards and, and they're doing exchanges and stuff, you start to see different orders like 20% off uh, when you spend 150 or more, right? Something like that, um, that really helps. Maybe it's free shipping, $100, you know, you spend $100, you get free shipping. And so there's ways to attract um, uh, kind of a, a, your your cart, um, your total cart uh, revenue, and so you can you can bump up that way uh, to really to really help drive revenue home uh, in those early months. Absolutely, getting up that average order value, right? Um, <laughs> that cart value. Justin, um, when we're talking about WooCommerce stores, we're talking about sales and coupons and gift cards. From the development aspect, can you touch on that a little bit um, on WooCommerce and how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So out of the box, WooCommerce is really powerful in terms of what you can do uh, with discounts and coupons and things like that. And we find that maybe 90% of the time that's sufficient. The value and the kind of robust power pack that you get inside of WooCommerce is enough. Um, but a lot of times what we do find is that customers do need more customization. Maybe they, you know, they see a big influx of support requests uh, post holiday. And so they want to integrate maybe like a chat bot on the front end, uh, or they want to have automated discount codes go out after X amount of days or something like that. Um, so while, while WooCommerce is really powerful out of the box, a lot of the work that we do does end up customizing how uh, those sort of workflows happen with customers and discount codes and, and customizing that entire process. Yeah, and I like the idea of re-engaging them with those, like automatically with those discount codes too, um, helping all those people with abandoned carts or to make an additional purchase. That's a good idea. Yeah. 
So um, what other revenue opportunities are we forgetting about, Amber? <laughs> Yeah, there's so much money to be had out there. But really, I think um, of the revenue generated during the three months of November through January, 28% is is in January. So there's still a lot out there. And January also has like a 6% higher average order value than the other months. And so I think a lot of that has to do with people coming to your, to your store maybe with gift cards and they're spending a little bit more than they than they would or what we're really recommending to our customer base is using product recommendations in either their email campaigns or uh, abandoned cart. So we can hit on kind of that cross-sell, upsell um, opportunity. Um, we're also seeing a lot of customers do the holiday gift guides, um, which, which is always exciting because that lasts an entire holiday season. And so customers are coming now, now that they have their gift cards, uh, checking out the gift guides and buying quite a bit um, post post holiday. Absolutely. I am a sucker for gift guides. I actually Google gift guides. So sorry to any of my friends and family who are watching. Um, you probably got a present that was offered on one of those. So um, I'm a good representative of that. Um, and then always, AJ, ahead. always ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then AJ, I have an I an idea that you may have something to say about another revenue stream as well to think about. Yeah, so so you you actually started to talk about abandoned carts a little bit, and um, it's it's one of the the areas that many businesses don't think about um, as they're going through. And and we know um, you know we all have cell phones uh, in our pockets, and we're uh, always on the go, right? We're always picking up kids or or going through uh, drive through or, or trying to do some sort of shopping. Um, and, and sometimes we'll, we'll check social media and all of a sudden we, we see a, a product that we have to go buy. And how many times have we done this where you've added it to cart, you get distracted, right? You're, you're the next person in line to pay for your food or pick up your kid or, or whatever. And you forget all about, about that cart. And so, uh, as retailers, we need to be able to capture that data and then send you an email, send you some sort of communication and say, Hey, you forgot about this product. Um, do you want to do you want to purchase it um and and so what we've done on the woocommerce side at liquid web is we've we've integrated with a a provider called jilt uh that, that hooks right into woocommerce so that if you are running a woocommerce store you're able to to quickly capture and take advantage of using uh an, an abandoned cart campaign uh to be able to to get some of that revenue um that you might have otherwise lost uh simply just just by somebody going about their day yeah, absolutely. I do think that, and you're right, I did mention that earlier, and I had a feeling you would hit on that um, because abandoned cart revenue is something that a lot of people miss out on. We talk about upwards of 70% of carts that are abandoned. So um, definitely a nice revenue stream if you can recover even 10 to 15% of, of that revenue. So we keep talking about looking forward 2019. What can we do on these you know, upcoming holidays and what, what else is there um, to happen. But I think that we also need to talk a little bit about looking back. Is this a good time to really review what we've been doing? Um, Amber, what's your opinion? Yes, absolutely. I think it's it's just a general rule of thumb to um, look back at your, your overall email campaigns, your marketing actions that you took the, the previous year to see really what worked and what didn't. So over 2019, you can really continue to improve. So we always talk to our customers about really auditing what campaigns worked and we measure what worked by not just what, what revenue was generated, but what was your open rate? What was your click through rate? Um, what kind of engagement did you have on, on certain campaigns? Really looking at the creative, maybe, maybe certain creatives drove different kind of engagement. Um, looking at ad performance. So, is it is it Facebook that's performing better for you? Is it web? Is it static and dynamic? So what really is kind of your your suite that is um, working working for you? And it's a great time to kind of refresh everything, right? We're we're getting out of the holidays now, and everyone's looking forward to spring. So what does your content look like now? What are your automated uh, emails look like? Are you updating subject lines to reflect the new season? Maybe you have different promotions running. So make sure the stuff that you're you're turning on right now um, kind of has your your message that you want to go into. Um, we're thinking spring already, and so that's what we're kind of pushing our customers to do going forward. 
So AJ, do you have the same type of conversations with store owners over at Liquid Web? Yeah, you know, we uh, a lot of times we'll we'll analyze um, and work with our customers to to figure out what um, you know what was their site performance. Are they are they struggling with site speed? Um, you know, is there is there code issues uh, that maybe they they have found through taking a look at analytics and um, other other types of reports and and work with them to to figure out okay do they do they need to engage with somebody like Justin and say hey here's uh, you know here's uh, an agency that can really help you uh, as it relates to the code um, you know here's some some load testing and whatnot that we can help work with uh, to make that happen um, as they start to look at into the new year um, one of the the core features uh, that just kind of comes out of the box with WooCommerce. As a way to um, do some upselling and cross-selling, and so we can start to analyze uh, with with them. You know, what what does it look like? Uh, what does their product catalog look like? Is it um, each individual product is just kind of there? Um, is there is there analytics that that indicate? You know, if if somebody bought a, a pair of shoes, they also probably bought a pair of socks. So in the in the cart, is there ways that we can um, start to utilize that? And so we work with them to to help make that um, a reality to help start their their year off driving. Uh, revenue in any way they can. Yeah. And then Amber, you talked a little bit about this, but are we looking back just to November and December? Or if they're talking about spring campaigns, are we looking back further? Um, what What do you think? Yeah, we, we recommend people doing a comprehensive review of their entire year. So look back at all of 2018. Um, so you can really replicate what worked and what didn't. Get, work out the kinks. Um, and what sometimes what I see a lot of a lot of customers sometimes have a hard time doing is if something something doesn't work, it's okay to cut it. Um, not everything is meant for every business, and so really focus your efforts on marketing actions that are driving uh, traffic in and revenue to your store. And for ones that aren't, it's it's okay to it's okay to kind of not invest your your time into that. Um, and then really the rule of thumb for marketers is is to test everything. Um, so we always suggest for our customers to to get on social to try. Facebook, try Pinterest, try Twitter, um, whatever it may be, if that's not something that they're used to, because they might find something that just kind of clicks. Um, but if it doesn't, it is, it is okay to kind of focus your efforts um, elsewhere. So testing everything, learning and, and moving on, but it is important to look at that entire year to see overall performance and how you can take what you've learned in 2018 and replicate and make it better in 2019. I'm really glad you mentioned Facebook and Twitter because my next question is actually going to revolve around social media. Um, and Justin, what what about social media um, and what role does that play after the holidays? Yeah, I think, you know, we all intrinsically know that social is huge, but as business owners, sometimes we don't know the best ways to utilize it. And so I think, you know, as a store owner, having a clear understanding of what social media channels actually apply to your target market is so key. Um, so like, for example, it's true that 35% of online adults uh, are on Instagram and of that nearly half make over $75,000 a year, which is amazing. Uh, but for you as a business owner, uh, you might know that your customer doesn't really use Instagram. They live and they breathe on like Pinterest and maybe their average income is $45,000 a year. So if you're investing all of your marketing efforts into Facebook and Instagram, when all of your people are on Pinterest, um, then you're really missing out. So really understanding where your people at is uh, so key. And even beyond that, um, say maybe your your target market really is on Instagram. Um, like if you're just posting ads uh, kind of haphazardly, but you don't understand that your specific customers really engage with stories a lot more than they engage with just kind of random posts and ads and things like that, um, then you're also missing out. And so I think really understanding at a deep level how your customer engages in social media is super, super important. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, Amber, do you have anything else to add on the social media component? Yeah, I think uh, social is an, it's an interesting avenue for, for a lot of our customers as, as so many people are revenue revenue driven. And I think really when you take a step back, how you can use social is a, a true way to engage with your customers. Let them get to know the brand um, and what kind of experience they're going to have when they, when they purchase from you. Um, so from my perspective, getting out on social, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, um, and kind of seeing where you're getting that most most engagement, whether 
whether it is more on Instagram, okay, focus your efforts there, but put out content that people want to see, that they can get to know you with, and really use social as an engagement tool. Um, so they begin to trust your brand and then naturally just come to the site and start start converting. So I don't always see it as like the direct sales channel. Um, and that's okay sometimes because you're, you're doing kind of the, the grunt work in the background of really building that relationship uh, over, over social. Yeah, absolutely. I probably spend too much time um, building relationships on social media channels. <laughs> <laughs> so AJ, when you're talking to your WooCommerce store owners, um, now that we've kind of talked about messaging and talked about campaigns, are there other things that you talk to them um, about taking care of their customers? Yeah. So, you know, Amber said earlier that, uh, that the first time, uh, the first part of the year is really focused on uh, um, uh, gift cards, right? And so gift cards and exchanges are going to put pressure on your customer service department, right? They're, they're the ones that are in the store, uh, admin dealing with, okay, I got to process a return. Okay, I got to figure out how to apply a coupon or a discount or, or a gift card to an order. Uh, and they're overworked and they're going to be overworked uh, the first few months uh, after that big post uh, holiday season. Um, so taking care of them is ultimately going to take care of your customers, right? When you have happy employees that are that are coming in and doing the job day in and day out, they're going to be the ones that are like, "Hey, this is great. Uh, I want to give back. I want to I want to make sure that I'm helping the person that's on the other end of whatever medium of communication you're you're interacting with." That's great. Um, and then Amber, do you have any thoughts on that as well? Yeah, I think w when you're thinking about post-holiday stuff, one of the things I mentioned too was was exchanges. And when you think about retail, that's there's a lot of moving parts of exchanges where you're bringing inventory in, inventory is going out. Um, so really, like AJ said, kind of keeping on top of um, that that customer experience and shipping is is going to be a big thing because um, USPS, FedEx, UPS, they're they're all going to be really busy with returns. And so making sure that your customers are aware of kind of the where the product is, um, hopefully can lessen some of the customer service calls that that people might uh, be getting, but also letting customer own, customers know that products that they may want are still in stock so they don't have to kind of abandon um, what they were wanting to get for a while. And I think that the other thing that we encourage our customers to do is uh, there's a lot of customers that have great experiences over the holidays. It's a great time to ask them for reviews of the product, um, as that really will help kind of their overall SEO of the website, more organic posts. Um, so ask for reviews about their great experiences, and hopefully you'll start seeing that on, on product pages and, and on social. Um, that will hopefully just help for future campaigns and so many people, that, that's how they shop nowadays. What, what do the, the reviews of that product look like? So um, it's a great time to capitalize on, on those, as long as we're providing good experience. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm getting ready to get some final thoughts from our presenters before we go into a few questions that we received, <clears throat> excuse me, before the recording today. So um, if we have anyone who's attending that does have questions that they would like to ask and have them answered by our experts, go ahead and put those in the chat now and we will make sure that we um, have time to get to those. So, Justin, I'm going to start off with you. Um, what are your final thoughts on how WooCommerce um, store owners can be proactive in the new year? Yeah, no, that's such a good question. I think, you know, the best advice I can give isn't actually technical advice. It's really practical. Um, you know, be proactive in getting to know your customers at a human level, right? They're not just a number. They're not just an order. They're actual people who are coming to you because they need something that you offer. So find a way to get face to face with them and really learn about what they love and maybe what they don't love about interacting with your company and your website. Um, and this can be a really great opportunity to be able to understand them more deeply and to be able to utilize uh, loyalty campaigns or, or even meetups in person uh, or, or things like that to get to know them better. And, you know, the ratio of, of benefit to cost on this is astronomical. Uh, you can learn so much in terms of actionable insight from honestly just a few conversations. Um, and so I think that would be really invaluable for store owners this year. Yeah. Amber, what are your final thoughts on um, WooCommerce store owners being proactive this year? Yeah, I think to piggyback on what Justin said, it's, it's just showing your customers how much you appreciate their business. Um, 
because they're they're kind of what keep you afloat uh, all year all year long. So doing something if you can create a, a segment of people bought who bought over the holidays and launch some kind of loyalty campaign or some kind of promotion for those people that that you can kind of give back and, and say thanks to them. Um, I think that's that's a great idea. I think also reviewing really your overall site. A lot of our customers put up um, more holiday themed graphics and and stuff. So do a quick audit of your site to see kind of what what banners and promotions are you putting out there. Um, check out you know page load time. Make sure everything's kind of optimized. And also make sure that as you're updating designs, you're not just thinking about the desktop experience, but also thinking about mobile and how everything's rendering. So it's good to do just a quick audit of the site. Make sure everything's refreshed. Again, we're thinking about spring already. Um, we're also in Atlanta, so it's starting to warm up a little bit. Um, but really starting to do those things so you can really kick off 2019. Absolutely. I'm glad that you mentioned mobile. I see like consumer reports like year after year, like mobile usage and actually making purchases from a mobile screen um, is growing astronomically, like upwards of you know 60 to 70 percent and projected close to like 80% um, in 2021. So um, for sure, when you're setting up those WooCommerce <laughs> stores, um, you have to keep in mind um, mobile usability and the checkout process. Um, and then AJ, do you have some final thoughts for us as well? Yeah, one thing um, Amber had mentioned, and I want to piggyback off of it a bit, is um, you know loyalty campaigns or, or looking at uh, who purchased uh, during that holiday season. And one of the things that we offer with our managed WooCommerce uh, hosting customers is a product called Glue. Uh, and, and one of the features that I really like about Glue, um, it's glue.io and it's spelled G-L-E-W, just if you're um, wanting to look at that. Um, it, it allows uh, customer segmentation automatically. So you can do things like, uh, it, it's gonna monitor your cart for um, high traffic, uh, high ticket items, uh, uh, people that have only used a, a coupon or or some sort of a discount. Um, but but in there, you can also tag and and look at and create a segment of your holiday shoppers so that you can then go in and start doing those loyalty campaigns. Um, even as last as close as last night, I, I got a, um, a a handwritten card, which is is a rarity these days from somebody that I had purchased uh, a gift for my wife um, and they just wanted to thank me. Um, and, and that has now stuck in my head and I'll go back and buy uh, something from them on Valentine's Day for her. So. I wonder if they knew who they were sending that to. <laughs> they probably they were being very strategic. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to touch on a few questions that we received um, before we started our webinar today, because as we asked people to sign up, we said, do you have any questions that you want addressed? Um, so I want to go over a couple of those. And again, if we have any more from anyone who's attending today, post those in the chat, and we'll get to it. And then I want to talk a little bit about resources that you guys have available for everybody. So we talked a lot about maximizing performance. Um, and one of the questions we received is actually how important is that to a WooCommerce store owner? Um, and is that something that they need to take in consideration and, and why? So I'm gonna send that back to AJ and then Justin, I want your thoughts as well. Yeah, so uh, we know that, that there's kind of a magic number uh, that, that we've kind of developed. Um, uh, holistically, just in, in e-commerce uh, shopping itself. And so we work with, with all of our customers to make sure that we are um, serving pages in around two seconds. We know that, that if it's over that, uh, I think it's roughly 50 to 60% of people will just kind of leave, leave the page, right? It's too slow. And so they're like, oh, I'll go find my product elsewhere. Um, but if it's under that two second mark, um, you know, you're going to stay, you're going to, you're going to buy the product. You're going to continue going through that shopping process um, and, and ultimately complete that order. Um, and so we work with, with our customers to make sure that, that their code is matching uh, that and, and that our server uh, is matching that as well. We have uh, 22 uh, different load tests uh, that we can come alongside you, run those, and then go over those results with you so that you can either take that to your in-house development team or work with, with an agency like Justin to then, um, put put all those those recommendations into action 
Okay, and then Justin, are there any tweaks that WooCommerce store owners can make on their own if they don't have a budget to invest in outside help? Or is there anything that you suggest that they look at or can do? Yeah, that's a really good question. And the original question was really good as well. I mean, oftentimes people only concern themselves uh, with performance when you think about high scale and you know millions of visitors. But the reality is maybe you have 10 visitors, but they're all really high value and you need to make sure the site loads quick for them as well. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely. There's things that store owners can do if they are in that segment, or maybe they're not worried about super high scale, but they're, they just have a few customers that are really important. Um, and some things that they can do, uh, <laughs> shameless plug, host with Liquid Web, uh, but other things that they can do <laughs> oftentimes, uh, oftentimes where it's slowest isn't even on the front end, it's actually on the back end when they're trying to manage orders and things like that. Um, and so there's there's really easy things you can do, like disabling custom fields on the order edit page, right? So a lot of our customers spend a lot of their time on those pages looking at the orders they have to fulfill. And they call us asking, hey, why is this taking 15 seconds to load? This is killing us. And then you just click a checkbox and disable that and boom, all of a sudden it load, uh, loads in like a second. Um, and so really little tweaks like that. And again, Liquid Web makes a lot of that really easy. A lot of the plugins that come out of the box with managed WooCommerce hosting handle that type of stuff for you. Um, but yeah, there's little things like that that store owners can do on their own for sure. And then Amber Thomas actually asked, I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit um, whenever he registered. When you're doing automatic campaigns of emails, is there a right number to reach out to people? So, you know, is two emails the right number? Is five too many? Is there any kind of a sweet spot that you suggest when talking to people about reaching out? Yeah, it's I, I don't love this answer, but it, it's so unique to each brand. Um, cause I mean, I, I get emails from, let's say Dick's Sporting Goods almost every, every couple days and I'm okay with it cause they usually are running awesome sales and it's usually something that I want to, I want to get, <laughs> but I think it's, it's really unique to your brand and understanding, okay, what, what, first of all, what's your list size? Um, we don't always recommend the batch and blast approach. So how are you segmenting your list really mm -hmm. can, can predict how, how I'd answer this. I think one to two times a week is, is a pretty good cadence for customers. Um, if, if they're in the kind of five to 10,000 list range or, or less, uh, really that once a week, I think is a good time to connect or even twice a month. If, if pushing once a week content out is too much, um, twice a month, just so you kind of stay top of mind. Um, another thing to do is sign up for your competitors' emails. How often are they sending? Um, Ooh, and yeah. start, <laughs> right? We got to get in the game. So. Start, start understanding what what are you up against and how are you going to kind of compete compete with that. If my if my competition is sending twice a week, well I am too. Um, so it's that kind of can help you benchmark um, where you should be at. But for most of our customers, I'd say once to twice a week um, at max. But even for some of our customers, it's okay to just do twice a month as well. Yeah, that's fabulous. Well, thank you very much. So um, I'm going to start with you, Amber, on the last thing. So what are some resources that people can use um, to like that you would suggest? Absolutely. So we've uh, developed something called the marketing maturity model, and it really kind of helps customers understand at which phase of marketing they're they're at with uh, growing, growing their store. And so we have a marketing maturity model quiz on our on our site, and you'll see it on the webinar right now with springbot.com. Take the quiz um, that you can really understand, okay, where am I at in, mar in my marketing and what steps do I need to take to progress to the next stage? So it's a really great resource that a lot of our customers and, and prospects have, have used so they can understand how do I continue to, to grow and evolve in my marketing maturity to uh, be kind of running full steam ahead uh, in, into 2019. Um, the other thing is, oh, sorry, oh, sorry I just want to do one, one quick thing, but if you want to reach out to us um, directly for any kind of questions around e-commerce marketing, um, you can hit us up at contact us at springbot.com. Perfect. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. And then, oh, no. um, AJ, what about you? Uh, yeah, so if you do host a WooCommerce site and you start to look at your analytics and you really see that uh, you know your site performance is just not up to, to par, um, we have developed uh, what we call a performance challenge. So you can see it there. It's uh, go.liquidweb.com slash performance challenge. 
Uh, what this is, is we actually create a, a clone of your site. We migrate it over to Liquid Web. We run a number of optimization uh, and performance changes to uh, just the way that, that WooCommerce and, and some of your plugins may be configured. Um, this, is, this is what we do. After all, we see tons of sites, and so we've analyzed and, and really tried to, to improve uh, upon that. Uh, and then and we go over those those results with you. We, we explain, you know, here's here's where you're going to see improvement. Here's where you're not going to see improvement. Here's things that you can change um, and really, really help you out in terms of making that that decision. If, if a hosting uh, change is something that would benefit. Perfect. And Justin. Yeah, so a lot of what we do. Uh, ends up looking like helping companies that have internal development teams and helping them get up to speed with kind of the latest and greatest techniques with WooCommerce. Um, and so we write a lot about kind of really developer focused uh, resources on our blog, which is at zeo.is slash writing. Um, so yeah, if you're a developer or if you have an in-house development team, there's a lot of really good resources there for you. Perfect. Well, I don't think I have any more questions from our audience today, um, but we do want to say that you can follow um, Liquid Web, SpringBot, and Zeo at um, their various Twitter accounts. Um, and so you can find them there. And thank you all so much for attending today's webinar. And thank you guys so much for presenting to us today. Um, I learned a lot and I really appreciate the time that you spent with us. Um, and anyway, if anyone needs to reach out to these, by, these guys, find them on Twitter or um, via their company pages and I'm sure they'd be happy to help you out. So thank you all so much and until next time. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.